Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Allen, Illinois. This video today is going to take a look at the calculations required of a radar gun to work properly. So, you know, uh, those of us who are basically 16 or older are very familiar with radar guns every time we hop in our car and we see a police officer as we are going on our trip. And so the calculations are rather simple. It's just a matter that the, that the frequencies, the changes in frequencies are essentially so very, very small but can, you know, impact uh, a lot when it comes to figuring out was I going 50 miles an hour or was I going 62 or was I going 80 or things like that. Uh, so here is the calculation over here on the left and then we're going to go start from nothing and work our way through this. So here is the formula. There's some constant. Look at that, times 10 to the 8th. That's a pretty big number. That's, you know, so 66 million or something like that is this C value. And then the, the radar gun is emitting, you know, beams of microwaves at some frequency E. And you have to know what frequency is shot out. And you also have to know what frequency comes back and is reflected to you. And then using this equation where you take R minus E, multiply it by C, and you take that quantity and you divide by the quantity R plus E, you get a value which is, you know, hopefully in the same region somewhere between 0 and 100, 100 miles per hour. This is, in, this is in miles per hour. Nothing here lists that, but everything is in miles per hour. So to kind of get everything started, I know I'm going to need to print stuff out. I'm going to use IOStream. I know I'm going to need to see out, like I just said, so I'll use my using std colon colon see out for this. I, ha I need to have my main function, and I need to have a return zero, and while I'm at it, I also need to just put a system pause in here so I can see what's going on. And just to make sure I got everything working right, I'm going to try to run this. And I get an empty screen so I know I'm on to something here okay and so this is just this is basically the first program you're writing outside of a hello world program if especially if you're coming out of my courses so you don't have to worry about function calls you don't have to worry about this or that but you do have to worry about variables and keeping track of things like that and so starting out we know we have a constant and we see that value so I'm gonna create a const double I'm going to call it C for constant, and I'm going to make it equal to 6.685. You don't have to put all the like put all the zeros in yourself and figure out and make sure something's wrong. You can just go E8. You can put a little E for exponential, and so double is the data type, and that is on our system at least right now. Eight bytes of data is being stored. And the const means I can't just go and try to change it later and just go, oh, C is three now, and it goes, nope. That's not, that's not allowed. Expression must be modifiable. So that's, you, you, part of this also is you have to get used to the, the compiler errors that come up and the way that the, you know, that the, the IDE speaks with you. Because uh, even when I was experienced and I went out into the world and I went out into the field, I worked on a different compiler and it took a little while actually to, to understand what the error messages were trying to tell me for the things that I, you know, things I knew like the back of my hand I, w I was used to seeing certain error messages and new ones would pop up. So understanding what the error messages are telling you is a big, big deal. And so you don't have to put const here. Uh, if you're coming from a Python, exp you know, Python experience, then you don't have to worry about const because that's not even part of, the, you know, part of the language. But in C, C++, const is one of those things where you have to kind of be ever vigilant. And you'll see over the course of the term what I mean. Okay, so I have my C value. So now, I'm, okay, so I'm going, you know, there's no input, no user input or anything like that. We're just setting the values. And I guess, you, you know, you could, set, you could put const for everything if you really want to. But the C is a constant, but, you know, like, because that is something that's supposed to never change. But the R and the E values will change. So I don't, I don't agree with putting the const in front of that. So let's see, the, oop, the E value, the... Uh, uh, the emitted value is C2 E10. I don't have to put all those zeros in there if I don't want to. But now the R value is 2. Point, oh boy, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, three, five. E8. And if we'll see if we get the right answer or something that's sane, and then we can tinker with things to see what happens if I modify to make sure I put enough zeros in there. Well, so now I, you know, so when we come, to, when it comes down to it, there's like three or four stages. And so th these are the givens. This is, you know, stage, stage zero and one. I kind of mix them together where you have your givens and you gather your inputs. And givens our inputs, so I'm just saying like you, you are given information like this, and then you're also given information like E and R. But if this was like a real program, E and R would not necessarily be given to you. You would have to set up a prompt and go enter E value, and the user would have to enter that. So it still falls under this, under this here. The givens to me are like stage zero, and then the gathering the inputs would be like stage one. So I have everything we need to do calculations. So stage two is the calcu you know, calculations, or um, the, following the book, IPO, this is the processing stage. And you can see here, it's pretty, mu it's pretty much all written out for us already. I have a value called V, and it's going to be equal to C times R minus E times, oh, sorry, divided by R plus E. And we don't have to worry about... The PEMDAS rules looks like PEMDAS has already been taken care of for us. And so now with everything there, V is, the processing is complete. This is a very, very simple program. And so the inputs are done, the processing is done. So now stage three is the output. And then if you want to think of it this way, at least right now, this is the cleanup stage. So if you want to think of it, there's technically five stages, if you want it, from zero to four. I don't consider zero, you know, like, that's why I consider it zero. Anyway, so now the output. So I so C out. Oops, I can do that, right? Yep, I can do C out. And I go the uh, speed of the car is put that. And for now, I'm just going to put everything on multiple lines just to be, be safe. So you can kind of see everything I'm doing. And, and as you get more comfortable, of course, you can start putting things on uh, other places. Oh, this is interesting here. And I go end line. Instead of putting like a, a slash n or something like that, I can put an end line, but this is saying this is undefined. And it, it just falls under the same thing here that I'm just, instead of, you know, including just C out, I can include std kind of end line. That's an end l. That is not end one. End line basically is a new line character, but it's better than the slash n because it's portable across uh, all architectures, all compilers, all, all systems. That slash n isn't necessarily, uh, there's, it's not as portable as the way I'm showing you right here. So let's see what we get now with all of this in place. I should get about, oops, I don't get an answer anywhere close to what I was expecting. And so I think I see what I did wrong. Um, do you see what I did wrong? And so I didn't do that on purpose. Mistakes happen all the time. I screwed up. This My car is not going uh, negative 60 million or whatever the heck. What happened here is, you probably were screaming at me right when I did it, because that's usually how it works. You don't notice things while you're doing the, the, <laughs> the triple thread over here of talking, thinking, and doing. But let's see. But this is correct, 6.685 times 10 to the 8th. This is correct, 2 times 10 to the 10th, but this is not. 2.000035 times 10 to the 10th, not 10 to the 8th. Let's try running that again. That, you know, but, I, but I looked at that and I, it, didn't, it obviously didn't seem right. And now when I run this a second time, I get a value that's more, more my liking. That's probably correct. Something around 58.5 miles an hour is as fast as the car is going, given the terms that I was given. Okay, so that handles part one, and um, so now we're ready to move on to the second part, and the third part will follow soon after. So step two here asks you to take the equation we had previously, which is V equals C times the quantity R minus E, divided by the quantity R plus E, and then go ahead and solve this for R, because we're going to be given, I say you can just jump to it, we're going to give, we already have C, which is the constant, they're going to give us V, and they're going to give us E, and we need to calculate, you know, basically what is the frequency coming back. 
when it, when from a radar gun when the car is going 75 miles an hour. So this is just pretty simple algebraic manipulation to get us from A from 1 to 7 from A to B here. So I divide by C, bring the you know get everything cross multiply. So V times this guy equals C times this guy. Distribute out everything, then move everything around so all the R terms are on the left hand side. Separate everything out. Work, work my way down and separate negative e out of this as well and then divide by v minus c so that r is separated. So r equals negative e times the quantity v plus c divided by the quantity v minus c, which is very similar. I mean, just when, I mean, it's similar but not nearly the same when it comes to this. There's a constant and there's a subtraction or an addition in the, in the numerator and a subtraction or a, an addition in the in the uh, denominator side of things too. So coming back now, now that we have that, go down here and they go, okay, we have our E value like before, double E equals uh, two E10. I gotta make sure I do this correct now. And I say my V value is 75 miles an hour. So now these are my givens. And now the processing stage is very similar. Now that we have our equation, the R value is gonna be equal to negative E times the quantity v plus c divided by the quantity v minus c. And then the, the, the c out stage here, I'm going to c out here and say the r value is, and then I'm going to put everything on one line this time, r, and then put an end line. Okay, so let's run this and see what we get. And we get a value of 2e10. And you go, that that's not passing my sniff test. And be, that's not because if e and r, 2e10, 2e10, if they were identical, my calculation would uh, basically trip up because this I would be dividing by zero and then all hell would break loose and the universe would, would cease to exist and so forth and so on. So something's not right here when it comes to this. But I'm pretty sure I've got my formula right, but I'm not 100% sure. So now in the output stage, this is where I have to basically say, I want to set up fixed point and I want to set my precision so I get 12, 12 decimal points after. And as you can see here, everything goes wrong because even with IOMANIP included, which is where these guys live, and that's because I'm doing all these using, 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 using. And so, again, I show you guys the, the ways to do things. The blanket way is to just do namespace STD, that's, but that's the worst way to do things. The better way to do things is the way we are doing it here with using STDC out, using STD inline. But the, the most professional way is basically just on a case-by-case -case basis to put STD colon colon in front of it. And you look, you know, that's just the way things go when it comes to that. So on a case by case basis, you're deciding which namespace this function or this object is coming from. And so now I know it adds a little bit of verbosity to this, and that's why people are very polarized when it comes to this topic. And I get I get emails and I get comments telling me to you know to stuff my STD colon colons everywhere. But in my experience, that's the, this is the best way to do things. You might be typing a little more out, but you're only doing it one time. And it's like when I was working out in the field with the things that I, you know, the video games and the stuff, like the first month of my project was writing the code. And the next six, to, six months to whatever was testing and testing and testing so that nothing would ever go wrong out in the field. So it's a matter of you're saving yourself a second or two by, ty by typing this out this way. But at the end of the day, you're not losing anything at all. Maybe you are, maybe you are for a small program like this, you're wasting time because the program's basically already done. But for actual projects, you want to do things this way. So now, at the end of the day, here is my answer. And now you can see, maybe I don't need 12 decimal points, but you can see that I get my answer out to I get my answer out here, and you can see that it's not exactly 2e10. It's 2.0000004487e10. And so that covers everything you know, it, it, that we needed to cover here in this video to get you started, just, just to kind of get used to things. And so let's see, a few things here. You can use floats if you really want to, but dub, there's no reason not to use double. Double means exactly what you think it means. It gives you double precision from what float does. 
Um, so you want so you want to make sure you get as much precision as you can. Maybe in video games we use floats because uh, we sacrifice a little bit of precision, but floats are faster than doubles in general. And so, but you want to also make sure that every one of our data types here, every one of our variables, C, E, V, and R, are doubles. They're all the same data type. You don't want to mix match. This is a double. This is an int, or this is a float, or this is a this or that. You want to make sure all you want to do your best to always make sure that when you do a calculation, it's the same data type. You know, if you like with this V plus C, you want to make sure V is the same data type as C. And the same goes for E when you do any multiplication. You want to make sure everything's on the up and up so the compiler and our, our program doesn't do anything funny. Uh, we'll see that basically it's, uh, it's called coercion. And sometimes, every so often, the compiler will not do what you expect it to do and you'll get some subtle errors that uh, hopefully come up sooner rather than later. Like in my case, I had stuff that came up uh, years after the fact, out as the product was out in the field. They found little tiny errors in my programs. So as always, thanks for sticking it out with me. If you have any questions, swordb at cod.edu or comment below, and I'll be happy to get back to you. Uh, depends again. This is the start of my term, so uh, maybe it'll be a little slower getting back to you than when I'm a little less busy. But, um, but that's a good video here. I hope you learned a lot, and uh, we're moving on to the next topics, moving on to CMath and CN and things like that. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.